what's up you guys it's your girl e and i am back for ambitions episode number nine giving up now that we got that out the way y'all this episode was so good i'm so hyped because my girl stephanie stephanie baby <laughs> i love her so anyway so we start the episode off rondell crying about the signatures and not knowing that over 60 percent of the people had to live in a district and they didn't live in the district at all so she's like uh peters did this and then she was like or my sister-in-law so she don't know who to point the finger at maybe they in cahoots together and then here come kent because she's sitting there with kent um councilman hamilton and her dad and he's like well you know your brother's the mayor and papa evan like psh, psh, not my son you now you with my daughter you supposed to be with her leave my son name out your mouth and we ain't gonna have this conversation no more so Kent like I don't I don't want no problems my bad and uh did she tell him I I think I need to be alone I don't want to deal with nobody I just need to deal with this on my own I mean you could lay down you know thank you um so then there's a party at Pure Ford Pharmaceuticals Lori walked downstairs looking a mess as she usually do um and then she's talking to somebody who i didn't catch their name it really wasn't important but um and they had these little drinks whatever them, whatever them drinks was i wanted to try it i love me a little drunky drink i loves me a little drunky drink so i was just like whatever that is I, I i would want that if i could have that um and then like the lady who we saw like in a preview for the next oh excuse me in a pre uh, the preview for this episode walk past and it's just like who that is so she walk over to her like you see something you like she's like yeah we did she's like we then this guy walks over i don't know who thought that he could play straight or anything like that he might not even be playing that's my bad um it's just like i wouldn't believe that y'all would be sleeping together though or that you would want to sleep with a woman because it's just like his shoulder action and the way he held it like when he was like okay anyway you straight for pay is that what it is because that's the only way i can believe that moving on so then we cut to you know them and it's just like sir don't nobody believe you eating nothing beating nothing nothing but anyway um because like i said i could do without the sex things i just i don't need them from y'all uh so then we have Lil Evan and Stephanie about to have breakfast, but Evan is on the phone, like right when Stephanie walks in. She's like, Who is that? The city is auditing Rondell, you know, after the signature thing. And Stephanie is just, <laughs> my girl got from here to here, grin happy. She's like, Oh, and then she trying to play it off. She's like, Oh, I'll say nothing but good things about her at the Thelma's anniversary party. So, of course, that means it's the anniversary of Thelma's opening up. And as I'm looking at her, like, since when do you come to my family events? You have excuses from here to high hell every time I try to get you to go. But now all of a sudden, you going? So, he looking at her like she got Rondell audited. She's like, don't look at me like that. I wouldn't do that. Maybe you did it. So, they're just going back and forth. And it's like, okay, neither one of us did it. So, let's not talk about it. And... Uh, I'm not even gonna mention it because it was gross and it's just like, ugh. If you've seen the episode, you know what I'm talking about. That scene. Mm -hmm. Um. So you know, right when they have, uh, you know, Stephanie and Lil Evan, they have a little scene between them two, but it's like it got interrupted. Excuse me, because uh, Stephanie got an alert on her phone, and it looks to be like a tabloid or you know, like a reading, and it says. I wrote it down. Pure Foy's general counselor charged with assaulting federal prosecutor. And you know, it has his <laughs> that mugshot was so funny. I was like, <laughs> sorry, just why you looking like that? Like I know why you looking like that, but why you looking like that? And so she just her face, she is distraught by that news. And Evan like, everything alright? She's like, it's just work. She just like and I know she's thinking like, damn man, what? I told you to do something else not get my boo in jail and uh so then it's like uh titus walks into hunter's office you know probably trying to explain himself but Lori is sitting at his desk and it's just like he's like i don't want to talk to you i want to talk to the grown-up because she is she ain't no she childish 
And it's just like, every time I see Lori, I just want to punch her in the face. And um, I wrote in my notes because I was trying to think. I was like, where was I going with that? So it's just like, they have this encounter. And she's like, I knew she had never hired you. And she gives me racist vibes. Nobody can tell me anything different. No matter how many black people that Lori want to sleep with, she gives me racist vibes because it's just like when titus was talking to the other black guy that worked there it's like she jumped right on that like why are they talking to each other it's just like as long as they stay in their place and like out of her way then she don't have a problem with them but if it's anybody else that tries to question her she just look at them with disgust and she not here for it so it's just like that's why she gives me racist vibes it's just like girl <sighs> anyway um so then Bella bring her baby to her mama. Like, I need you to watch him because I got to design more clothes for, what is it, Corazon? I hope I'm saying that right. Um, And her mama like, no, nah, we got to set up for the anniversary party. Rand Rondell need me for that. She's like, but I need you more, mommy. You know, trying to be all sweet, mommy. And it's just like, but I told, see, that's why I ain't having no kids. Cause, and I do it too sometimes, so I can acknowledge this in myself. Kids are selfish. I just told you that I had something to do and I already got plans with my job and my work. But, okay, and something about that. Because I don't know if she like part owner of Thelma's Place or if uh, Bella's mom got her own business. But we're going to talk about that later because that's later in the episode, like the very end. But um, it's just like, I told you I got my own stuff going on. So how you come to me talking about you need me more? Excuse me. Move. 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 Are you serious, Hannah? Thank you. I'm trying to get rid of a notification. Sorry if y'all see my nail flicking. Um, and it's just, but of course, as mamas always do, she like, okay, fine. I guess I can get somebody to cover me, and I'll take him. And she's just like, oh, thank you, mom. And she's like, no, selfish heifer. Um, so then we get uh Damien. Well, Amara's coming into work, and Damien is sitting there talking to people, and it's just like. I think he was on some, you know, like he's f heading the charge against Titus and saying that Titus attacked him. And it's just like, Amara just tries to walk past because it's obvious that they talk about her because like as soon as she walked past, y'all conversation stop. And then it's like he leave the group that he talking to and go to her like, can you talk to me for a minute? And she's like, no, and we're not working together no more. And then it's like the group start talking again. So it's just like, y'all didn't even try to make it seem like y'all wasn't talking about her. Um, And so he tells her, you acting like I assaulted him when it's the other way around. And it's like, it's no other way around because the man did not hit you. But we know this your story and you stick it to us, so let that go. And then she's just like, we both know my husband didn't do that. And he told her, what do you say? He said, I feel sorry for you because you sticking by a man who don't deserve it. Who does? You? And then it's like he get a text from his phone. And she, uh, <laughs> Amara got him. She was like, who is that? The wife of the um person who really attacked you? He's like, jealous? She's like, no. Because you ain't even, you wasn't only with me when I was sleeping with you. And he's like, you're the only one that mattered. It's just like, Damien. <laughs> like bro what's going on so then we switch to uh we back at Thelma's place and Rondell is looking at cause the pie did look suspect I just said what is this too but um I think she said rutabaga I think that was her pie uh Papa Evans girlfriend was her Luleen Luleen is her name I'm just gonna call her Papa Evans girl so she like Rondell she like so why is this here she like, oh, uh, we thought that uh, I would be pitching in more around here. Rondell looking like, who, who is we? And who said this? And pitching in where? What you gonna be doing? And uh, then Papa Evan like run in and he like, oh, I think the kale chips are like burning or something. Like she's like, oh, thank you for reminding. Me. Oh, but I got a question. Why do I'm gonna put some respect on her now? Why Luli always got a hat on? She always got a church hat on, and we ain't nowhere near the church. Lulene, you didn't have that hat on when we caught y'all in the bedroom together. You can take that hat off sometimes, sis. Ma'am, let me respect my elders. Ma'am, you can take that hat off at some point and let it go. Um, so then, you know, as she go in the kitchen, checking on the kale chips, 
Rondell like, what you, what you doing? And he like, maybe it's time for you to move on and, you know, let us take care of the restaurant. And then he pull out this little ring and she's like, I know that ain't what I think it is. So Papa Evan just grinning. He like, you know, it's time for me to move on, baby. What, um, the mama saying, uh, baby boy, mama gotta have a life too. So it's just like, I, and I get it. Rondell, you know, she's only had the memory of her mom. You know, like, he ain't show interest in nobody else probably or even just let it be this serious. So she's just like, no. Like, okay, she's a little girlfriend, but now you talking about marrying her? No, nah, I, don't, I don't like that. Um, So now we have little Evan spending time with the baby because uh, uh, Bella's mom, like, set it up for them to meet. And he's like, thank you for letting me spend time with him. And she's like, it's not about you. A boy needs a father in his life. We already know how I feel about that. I just, I'm just of the belief you cannot miss what you did not have. You can, but I understand that boys need a male figure to teach them certain things. Whatever, but my thoughts don't matter about that. This this is show. Let's keep, let's keep it there. And um, so he says... Lil Evan, he said, I met Bella before I was even the mayor. I thought we would have had a life together. And the mom said, y'all still can, but you don't want that. And it's just like, he married to somebody else. He's the mayor. He got kids. But that made me think, because it's like, if you was with Bella before you was even mayor, and I don't know if it's something like how the mom said, because... Anyway, Evan said, he was like, uh, Bella is a grown woman. She got to take her part in this too. Like, I'm wrong, but she was also a part of my wrongness. And she was like, I don't care if she's 17 or 70, that's still my baby. And she was like, and you took her life and you ruined it. So it's just like, were they together before he even met Stephanie? And like, Bella just stayed along for the ride and then she just had Joaquin and, uh, so now, if you watch Rambling K, which I I'm, I think she might be right, because it's just like, is uh, Lil Evan Carly's dad? Or is, uh you know, do Carly really belong to Titus? And they just passing it off as his child. But I also remembered, they mentioned another kid, and I want to know where the son is. They supposed to have a daughter, you know, Carly is the daughter, and there's a son. I might have to go back and revisit an episode or two because it's just like, y'all supposed to have two kids. Where this boy at? Where the other boy at? Because when Bella was going off about, um, you know, he never, him never being able to be in a spotlight with uh, Joaquin like he is with his other two children. It's like, where's this other child at? Did I, did I miss something? Am I missing something? Somebody please let me know. Um... And it's just like, what? Why are you trying to put it all off on me? Like, I just ruined her. If at the end of it, she knew what it was and she stayed anyway. So it's like, I'm with Evan. At some point, she got to take some responsibility. Yeah, he ain't no good, but she ain't no good either. She ain't, but like she said, that's her baby. So she's going to take her baby side and he ruined her life and strung her along. You know, whatever. Um, they story, I need some more information on that because that kind of just like, murked it up for me um so bella comes back early and she's like what is what is this so now she mad at her mama like you've been sneaking the baby walking to see him we already got a set schedule what you sneaking extra time in for so it's just like bella you wrong for that because you probably don't cut down that time really ain't letting him see him like that so of course he's sneaking around you know trying to see his son so now she mad at her mama and she mad at Evan. She's like, girl, when are you not mad? Um, <laughs> so we got Damien in his hotel room. And I'm wondering, like, how long he been there? Because at some point, you can't get in a little apartment or something. Why are you in this rinky-dink hotel? Because that, that's another thing. Maybe if you were staying at a hotel, that's fine. But why are you in this hotel? Like, this little whatever. Um, so then we hear a knock on the door. He opened it. And this Stephanie showing up looking like... I'm going down, I'm going down, baby. 
it's just like girl why you wrapped up with the lipstick the big old sunglasses it's like sis what's what's going on you ready for your part uh anyway so she you know of course it's about Titus she's like why you get my boo locked up so then it clicks for Damien what everybody else already know she's still in love with Titus she's like I want you to destroy their marriage you know get them separated but don't destroy my boo get these charges dropped and figure it out well, you can have her you don't slip with her again whatever but my man drop these charges because he he don't even fight so i know he ain't do that to you so i'm whatever you got going on or she said she was gonna leak all the cases that he done like tampered with or whatever so then he choke her up and like um, what's from stopping me from snapping your neck right now? And then he throws her down on the bed. I said, Lord, please not a rape scene. I don't need it from y'all. My girl pulled out her little her little gun from like uh this right here. This was stopping you. So back on up. <laughs> hey, but what made, <laughs> what made me laugh so hard in this scene was the way she slapped that already huge mark on his because you know he messed up from getting uh beat up by the two guys that he paid to beat him up so this cheek is like out here and it's purple and bruised and the way she pat pat that cheek as she was leaving out the door playing with a hey, y'all gotta watch this scene Steph <laughs> robin Gibbons, and the way she like she did the shimmy with the guy says y'all gotta stop playing with me that was hilarious um okay let me get out of here because i'm not trying to have this video be 30 minutes like the last one and waste all time um so then we have it told on titus because amara is sitting there with the it guy at her job and he just like uh i admire how you so dedicated to your job because you be up at three and four o'clock in the morning looking at, you know, going over cases and stuff like that. And of course her face is like, no, I don't. So it's just like, I'd be in bed at that time. But of course she can't say that. Cause then she telling, cause he, and he clocked it too. He was like, that is you on your computer at those hours. Like, she's like, yeah, she got to play it off. Yeah, of course. Like, no. But she thinking like, for real, once again, playing with my job. See, that's when Titus, oh. <gasps> Um, so Stephanie, like Lori walks in to see Stephanie instead of, I guess she was assuming that it was Carly. And so she's like, I received a message from Carly saying we need to meet and you would not be here. And she's like, of course you did. I sent it from her computer. And I said, that's the one thing about, um, Apple that I kind of don't like that you can send messages from the MacBook to no no way no 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 so she like sit down and it was just like i was like why would she call her here and uh i was like she set it up i knew she, it's just the way she was talking and so she, i said she set that up lo and behold the couple walk oh, well the escorts we come to find out that they're escorts they walk from the back in uh like maid uniforms like they work for her you know like literally work for her in her house and she's like they're the top paid escorts around and you know you fell for it and lori like tried to stand on her high horse and she's like you set me up and i'll tell and da -da -da -da. and she stephanie like girl i will let this tape out and let people see what you girl nobody care about you um and told her she's like break up with my daughter and which i can understand like somebody probably gonna say that it's wrong call stephanie a bitch you know say that she messed with her daughter. but this needs to happen though because even if Lori developing fake feelings for her now you know like i was supposed to set you up but i fell in love with you and all of that doesn't matter it's just like even if that was the case it's like you came into this with ill intentions so once again like it don't matter that you caught real feelings that does not matter so it's just like at the end i can see stephanie's point of wanting to protect her daughter and trying to look out for her so it's just like i'm trying to help you along the way yeah you're gonna bump your head on your own but if there are things that i can avoid for you i will so whatever um i feel like senior knows that that's his uh his grandbaby. I think he do. Because early, I meant to say that early, when uh Bella brought him by in the restaurant, it's just that as the scene was ending, that look that he got in his eye as he was looking at the little boy, I feel like he know that that's his grandson. But 
my thing is that just looks like a completely Hispanic baby with no African heritage or nothing. So it's just like how, I don't know, but I just feel like he knows. So it's just like, y'all didn't even try to make that baby have a little, some kind of features are something. I feel like there's always a telltale sign of somebody, even if they are Hispanic or have like Latin X, whatever in them you can still see the African in them too. It's just like, no. <clears throat> so then Amara confronts Titus. And she's like, what's, like, <sighs> like, help me understand. Help me help you to help me. Because it's just like, you took my work computer? That could have sparked an investigation on me. Like, I could have been fired. And he just sitting there like, so? Titus on this, I mean, not Titus. Uh, Damien is on or something, and I'm going to figure out what it is. Not through me, you not. And I'm like, and you done took my work badge and my computer. I'd have killed him. I'm, or I would have whooped on him. Because it's just like, I'm like her. Like, I have no words for you. Because how are we going through all this? And you just trying to make it seem like it's my fault. Or I'm crazy for looking at you like you crazy for putting us through all this. Because like, if you would have left him alone and just trusted me. We would have been okay, but no, you can't seem to do that. Because uh, <laughs> I'm like, I wrote it down in my notes, but I don't even want to say it. Damien is getting head from another man. And he just gets up and says, I don't see how Amara left all this behind. And I'm just like. Uh, Stephanie Rondell and Papa Evan meet and make a deal about Thelma's place. And Stephanie sold it as, you know, you still, how do I want to say? Like, it'll just be some slight changes made. Something about a 99 year deal. You know, like they get their rent space, I guess, for 99 years at a low, low price. And that uh all the com like the surrounding companies will get uh paid a upchart like they'll get paid more than what the property's worth. So of course they make a deal with her and Stephanie <laughs> as soon as they leave to her assistant, take that part out, take that part out, take that part out. They ain't getting none of that. She said that hood rat don't know how to read a contract. She just gonna sign it and whatever is like really in there, then of course that'll be what it is. Um, Lori is standing at Carly's car at her school. And of course, of course she's happy to see her at first. Like, oh, this is a nice surprise. So then Lori break it down. Like, we can't see each other. We can't be together. I cheated on you. Had a threesome. Your mama set it up. She's an evil person. But it's just like, girl, what are you? You still ain't talking. Like, you trying to spill Stephanie tea, but tell your tea how you really got with her to get information from her. It's just like, you don't want to tell that. You just want to tell her how evil her mama is and how her mama did this awful thing to you and uh, put you in an awkward place. And she tried. She tried. She was like, um, we never put a title on this and what this was. And Carly said, girl, don't play with me. Yes, we did. And you know we did. And so she's like, yeah, I knew that we were a couple. So it's just like, even if my mama didn't set it up, you still slept with two random people at a party that you was at. You know, just to say that you could. Because it wasn't a real reason. Because they weren't that cute. It wasn't like you was drunk from what we saw. You just did it because you could. And thought that you could tell her, oh, we weren't really in a relationship anyway. And Carly said, don't play with me. Yes, we was. Um. So we see Amara about to leave. Like, she packing up her stuff. And, of course, like, Damien hears her. So he comes through. Because, what, she got, like, a connecting office. Like, a little space right here. And then you walk into her office. And he tells her, like, we need to stop playing these games. You know, it's us. It's us against the world, girl. I dropped the charges for you. I'm going back to Birmingham. But I ain't going without you, though. He said, I want you. You want me. The math is very simple. On some Beyonce, one plus one equals two. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I took myself down with that one. I'm sorry. But that, like, he just, like, 
I ain't leaving without you. You meant for me, girl. What's wrong with you? Why you don't see that? And it's just like, nigga, because I don't want you. I want my husband. And now that I see how crazy you are, like... <laughs> And so she picked up the phone. See, that was her problem. Now she was like, I'm calling security. But then she put the phone back down. I would have called uh, security regardless. Like, y'all know the situation. I really don't even want him by me. So there's no misunderstanding. But she just like walks past him and like told him to get the hell out. Whew, baby. This last scene right here, Stephanie. Your life slowly starting to crumble, sis. I need you to get it together. So we had the um, anniversary party for Thelma's and um, what? Everybody there. We got, of course, Papa Evan with uh, Lu Ling. Um, Ken is there for uh, Rondell. Evan and Stephanie show up. Carly there too, but it's just like she walked past Stephanie to greet her dad and then just like go outside. It's like she making it very obvious that she's upset. But, like, acting like she don't want to talk about it. So, it's just like, all right, girl. Um, who else was there? I think that was it. I think I named everybody that was there. But it's like, uh, of course, uh, little Evan got his bodyguards. But then somebody comes in and gives Stephanie an envelope. And she's like, I'm, because uh, Evan looking at, little Evan, looking at her like, I know you're not trying to do that tonight. And she's like, it has to be done. And he's like, if you make a scene at this party. And then she tells him, um, if anything, Stephanie uh, Lancaster knows how to do is be low key. <laughs> and I found that funny. Um, so then she tried to go to Rondell, like, can I talk to you? Rondell's like, no, not right now. Can't you see I'm trying to host a dinner party? And then we cut to Papa Evan talking to uh, Luling. And, you know, he was just like, you will never be in my wife's shadow. Um, what is he? Like, her ghost, like, you'll never be in her shadow. And Lulene was like, I actually want to talk to you about that because I am a little worried about competing with a dead woman. And he's like, no, 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 no. And it just seemed like right as he was about to go there, you hear Rondell, like, kind of screaming, like, Stephanie, I told you I'm not signing that tonight. So it's just like, we got over there, like, what's going on over there? So then, of course, and I think it's something in that deal that she put in there that she needs to have signed off right away. Like, she probably promised something that she ain't got no, um, she ain't had no business promising. And this video is longer than what I wanted it to be. It's about to be another 20, longer than 20 minutes now that I brought attention to it. And so, it's just like, she following her around the restaurant. And Rondell is just like, not tonight. Can't you wait till tomorrow? And Stephanie will not let it go. She's like, no, I can't. I need you to sign this tonight. So then, uh, and oh, um, Inez, or Inez, Bella's mama. She there too, of course. And um, they're like, what's going on? So she like, Rondell like, Stephanie, please. And of course, my girl Stephanie, she's like, oh, they don't know? Perfect opportunity. And it's just like, girl, if you wanted her to sign the papers, what you about to do, she definitely not signing them now. But she tells everybody that Rondell and Papa Evan agreed to sign, you know, like, away the property. And, like, everybody's upset. Um, Luleen, like, what's, what's going to happen to my daycare? You did this without talking to me? And then Inez is just like, Rondell, we stood beside you. We supported you, thought that we was keeping our neighborhood. And you go and sign behind our backs? Like, what's going to happen to us? What does this deal mean? And so, of course, like, Rondell is upset. And she told Stephanie, she said, everything you touch turns to shit. And it's just like, then, of course, here come Carly, like, bringing up the rear. Everything Lori said about you was true, wasn't it? And it's just like, girl, ain't nobody worried about you right now. And your little feelings. Don't nobody care about that. And it's just like... So she kind of left at the table by her, like Stephanie is left at the table by herself, clutching this folder with the um with the contract in it. But it's just like at the end, I feel like she's gonna come out on top some way. But it's just like right now, my girl is kind of down in the dumps. It kind of sucks. But yeah, that was this episode. It was a great episode, and I'll catch y'all in the next one.